<laughs> you know you're going to upset people when you say stuff like that. You're going to upset people. Good preachers are in the upset people business. <laughs> How am I doing? All right. <laughs> Leslie, you need a Bible? Raise your hand. You all got a Bible? Turn your Bibles to Micah chapter 6. <laughs> Micah chapter 6. All right. Amen. Thank God for His mercy and grace. Bless the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know what a privilege is to carry the name? Do you? You heard me say this many times. People are too flippant about their faith in Jesus. They're too casual about it. Freaking way too casual about it. You know what a privilege it is to carry the treasure in your earthen vessel? The treasure of the gospel, the very message that saves people for eternity. Do you understand what kind of privilege that is? And with every privilege comes responsibility. People like privilege. People don't like responsibility. We have a lot of folks who like to play Christian. And and you, you got your Christian bumper sticker? Got your big Bible? Hmm. Know all the buzzwords and the terms. But when it comes down to it, the real question is what is really coming out of us? What is coming out of us? And what I mean by that is, not just like at a moment of the day, but our life witness. What is our life witness? Not can we quote a scripture, but what is our life witness? What is the witness of our life? Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says this. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? <laughs> to act justly. <laughs> Love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. There are some things in the Bible in which God boils down something. He said, all the laws in the pro- of the prophets can be boiled down and love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbors yourself. And so God boils down at this incredible word, thick Bible, amazing. I've been studying it for 40 years. I haven't even scratched the surface. And, you know, you can ask yourself, well, what does God want from me as a Christian? Because sometimes it seems difficult. You know, there's so many things I'm battling. But what he really wants of you and me is what? <laughs> to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly. So if you boil down what he's trying to do for what he wants to do in us is he wants to exact a witness out of us. He wants to exact a witness out of us that is just and merciful and humble. And for you who have not heard me describe what humility means, let me just do it again because people really mess that up. They think humility means you're quiet. Humility doesn't mean you're quiet. You're, it's not a personality type. Humility is not a personality type. Humility, you could be the most gregarious, outgoing person in the world and be humble, and you could be the quietest person and be prideful. This is a matter of the issue of the heart as we stand before God. What has God shown us that he wants from us? To... Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. The general witness of who we are, what he exacts out of us, and the witness of our lives. There's a cumulative effect of your life which will increase the kingdom of God or decrease it. Are you hearing me? 
<laughs> Jesus told the parable of the talents. And he said, I'm going to paraphrase for you. A couple of them did the right thing. They invested. They got a return. One of them was afraid and went and hid it. The master came back and said, well done, well done. And then said to the other one, what are you, what's up with you? I was afraid and I hid it. You see, the reason why God wants us to have, uh, to exact just walking out of us and mercy and humility is because he wants to multiply that. And the first way he multiplies that is in our children. Right? The cumulative effect of how your children are affected by your walk with Jesus or your lack thereof. Now let me just set this for you clear. You could be the greatest parent there is. You can walk in absolute perfection and have a child go astray. How do we know that? Because we can read the book of Genesis and see where God, our Father, was the perfect Father. And yet, because of free will, the decision was made to rebel against Him. So it's not an automatic that if you're a good father and mother that your children are going to walk right with God because they have free moral agency to make a decision. It's not an automatic but it sure makes a difference, doesn't it, people? Are you with me? It sure makes a difference. If you and I do not make church important to us, why, do we, why would we think it's going to be important to our, our children? If we do not make prayer important for us, how do we, why would we think our children is going to be important? If we don't make witnessing the gospel to people who are lost important to us, how we think. If we tell our children that everything comes before God, why would we be surprised when we grow up, when they grow up and everything comes before God? Hmm. Well, I was going to go to church, but they got Pop Warner. I was going to go to church, but they got baseball. I was going to go to church, but they got soccer. I was going to go to church, but they got this. I was going to go to church, but they got that. But they got this, but they got that. It's almost like folks today are just waiting around looking for a better offer. And I think the reason for that is because people are not invested in worship and the Word. You're not invested. When you're invested in the things of God, you can't wait to come together and worship the Lord together. I'm always looking forward to church on Sunday morning. Always. Always looking forward to it. Always. And when I was pr regularly playing with the band, I was looking forward to every time we get here in the morning, everybody loves Jesus, love each other, and we worship God together it's during worship practice, you know, during the practice of getting the band together. And you just can't wait to get to church because we're gathered together learning how to walk in justice and love mercy and walk humbly. Our children are going to, when they grow up, and this breaks my heart, I cannot tell you, how bad this breaks my heart. I've heard this many times. Adults tell me, oh, I had a bad, you know, I was growing up in church and they were mean to me and I was growing up in church. It was a bad experience. I'm thinking to myself, isn't that awful? I want our children to know that we love them. All right? On the other hand, we also have to teach our children that if you have a bad experience in church, it's because people are human. And that's a nice excuse to run away from God. Oh, I was hurt at church. I've heard that a million times. Haven't you heard that? I was hurt. Somebody hurt me. You've never hurt anyone in your life? Never? Always been on the up and up in every way. Never let anybody down your whole life, really. Well, I think you should write a book and let us know how you do that. You see, every person who's alive is going to let somebody down. Where does this notion, you get saved, you come to church, everybody's supposed to be perfect, where did this come from? That's not the gospel. The gospel is by grace, I say, through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works. Why not of works? Because we can't work for it. What happened to mercy towards one another? You see, God wants us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. 
as we do that, not only do we do that in our relationship with God, but it affects the people around us, particularly our children. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 1, please. 1 Samuel chapter 1. So when we're talking about dedicating our children, what are we really talking about? If we're talking about having a ceremony or service here where we lay hands on them, which we're going to do at the end of the service, right? Lay hands on them, believe God, you know, pray for them. The parents are going to dedicate their children to the Lord. We have grandparents here, and we're, we have a church family. We're going to lay hands on them and believe God to touch them, right? But really, the real dedication service to dedicate your child lasts a lot longer than one Sunday morning service. Because what are we really talking about when we're talking about dedicating our children? This not, the child's not doing anything. This is the parents. The parents making a vow before God and a vow before this company of witnesses that we are going to raise our children in Christ. If we're going to raise our children. So you're making a vow today, parents. You're making a vow today to act justly to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Because the real dedication of the child from the standpoint of of being effectual and how that child will behave themselves when they come of age to make their own decisions, it's going to be determined by what we do, not just on one day when we have a ceremony and service, but how much we are committed to walking justly and loving mercy. And walking humbly before God. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, it says this in verse 20. From wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, she bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Verse 21. And the man Elkanah in all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up. She said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child weans, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and abide there forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seems to thee good. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only the Lord establishes words. So the woman abode and gave her son, and she weaned her son. And then when he had weaned him, she took him up with her, and with three bullocks and one ephod of flour and a bottle of wine and brought it up into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew the bullock and brought the child to Eli. And he said, O my Lord, as thy soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I had asked of him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent unto the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And so the child worships the Lord. This is a time of Samuel when, she, when his mother brings back and says, I'm dedicating this child unto the Lord because she prayed, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. I like how it puts it here. And she lent him to the Lord. She gave the child to the Lord. She said, the Lord, don't forget now. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> she lent him to the Lord. Right? I, like, I like how that's put. Frank, you can, got some mama talking, right? <laughs> Amen? Amen. And so this is really what we do as believers. And if you really want to know, if you, she's a little backwards there because really God has lent them to us. And we are charged with raising our child, children up in the things of God by teaching them the things of God, but also showing them the things of God. If I can't read about the importance of church and then not show up. I can't tell them that telling people about Jesus is important and they never, they never see me ever do it. If you want your children to be bold for Jesus, you have to be bold for Jesus. That's where they learn it. From the parents. Now the world has done everything it can to get the parents from getting the children separated. You know that. The world is doing everything it can to separate the parents from the children. They want to constantly try to find ways to get your children into the state's hands as soon as possible. You know that's true. (laughs) Right? If you send your children off to Caesar, you're going to get Romans. You hear what I said? 
If you give your child to Caesar, you're going to get Romans. Everywhere in this culture, they're coming against the parents. Everywhere. Years and years ago, it was like a parent would raise their child and a society would support that. And uh, when I was young, in 1862, what was 1862? <laughs> they would use Morse code and call my father. <laughs> and tell him I was doing something wrong. I know you don't believe I ever did anything wrong. My father would know. How did my father know? How did he know that? They all knew. Because they all would talk to each other. And they would. it wasn't like, you see, back then it wasn't like, well, oh, my Johnny wouldn't do that. Are you accusing my Johnny? Of doing? They would be like, oh, I know he did. Wait till he gets home. I'll deal with him. Now you don't have that. What you have now is the society is against you. It's against the Christian parent. And teaching things against the Word of God. And even really putting the parent down, calling the parent unscientific and stupid and all kinds of things. It is imperative that you double your efforts in inculcating the Word of God into your children. Don't depend on the pastors to do it. You're the parent. We supplement. We're not the main influencers. You are. And so... Walking justly, to act justly and love mercy and walk humbly, but it's got to be done according to the Word of God and in boldness because your children need to know the truth because everybody is trying to sow into them the lies. We're living in a perverted society. A perverted society. A society that doesn't know the difference between a male and a female. A society that is so goofy and crazy and this is not a political statement, it's just a statement, that the President of the United States of America could stand up there in a debate completely out of it, and uh, we wonder why he's there. Why? Well, we've sinned against God, that's why. Greatly. And we're reaping what we sowed. We're getting the leaders we deserve. We better go back to inculcating the truth into our children. A governor recently just signed a bill in Louisiana, I think it's Louisiana, to put the Ten Commandments back in the schools. Everybody's freaking, everybody's bugging out about it. Oh, God forbid our children should learn not to murder. That's going to be detrimental to them to learn that. This is a Judeo-Christian culture. It was founded on Judeo-Christian ethic. We always had the Ten Commandments in the school. We used to pray every morning at school. It was a generic prayer. It just said, God, we acknowledge our dependence upon you. We beg for your mercy upon us, our parents, and our teachers. That's it. Almighty God. That's, that's the prayer. Can't have that. Because we can't force religion down anybody's throats, but we can have weirdos running around dressed like women dancing in front of children half naked. We can't have the Ten Commandments. Nonsense. You are dedicating your children today in a world that's hostile to you. Hostile to your authority hostile to the one true God you serve. It will be very, very important for you to stand for truth and to inculcate that word in your children and don't, don't think that they're going to get it in the world anywhere. Look at the opposite. So we must prepare our children for war. Spiritual war. Spiritual war. If we must train the hands of our children for spiritual war. Psalm 127 says this, Except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watch and walks in vain. It says in verse 3, Children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of, his womb is his, of the womb is his reward. The word heritage in Hebrew means an inheritance from God, a specific inheritance from God. An inheritance and a legacy. 
You see, we inherit as children, and then we leave a legacy. What will the legacy be? If you know, as we come to an end of this message, there's lots of stories of very famous rich people who left trust funds and businesses to their children. Children who were not taught how to appreciate the finances they were given. And then a couple generations, all of that money is gone. And even some for some, that business is gone. And it's gone. And they left something. Is gone. When you inculcate the Holy One into your children, when you make church a priority and they see you lift your hands and worship Yahweh, When they see you bow your head before El Shaddai, mighty God. And they see you take of your finances and support the things of God. And they see you let people stay in your house and needed a place to stay or you feed somebody or something and you're serving God on a regular basis. You will sow acting justly, loving mercy and walking humbly into your children. And they will understand just how imperative it is that they inculcate the word of God into their children, that they get into the house of God and worship God and be serious about the relationship with him. My friends, nobody has an influence on your children like the parents do. And a quick word to the grandparents. Grandparents have a great influence and grandparents should be influencing and supporting their children so those young people understand what is proper, respect, and honor. They're not going to get it in the world. They're not going to get it in the school system. They're going to get it from you, or they're not. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We leave the legacy of the name the name above all names, the name of the Messiah. In Hebrew, Yeshua. In Greek, Jesus. In Spanish, Jesus. The name above all names. We want to leave that name in our children. influencing them so that when they grow and they're on their own and make their decision that they will decide my feet belong in the kingdom of God. There's no greater joy for a man than to see his grandchildren worshiping God in the church with him. There's no greater joy any grandfather in this room who sees that will tell you there's no greater joy than to see your grandchildren worshiping Almighty God. When you stand there and you look at your grandchildren and your children, and as a man of God, this is what you say. You say, that's all that matters to me ultimately. When I, when I die, I want to hear from God, well done, thou good and faithful servant, and I want to know my children are worshiping Yahweh. I want to know that my children have the name Hashem. That the Holy One of Israel, Kadosh Yisrael, is in their lives. That the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is important to them. That they look to the heavens from where their help comes. From Adonai, Sikano, the Lord of Righteousness. Jesus. It's in that name that we do this dedication. We're going to have the 
Parents, come up now and stand right up here. Elders, please come up. Whoever's coming with you, if the grandparents would like to stand, feel free. Stand around. <laughs> Pastor Brian. You have it? Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Bless God. In Luke 18, and they brought him also infants that he would touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called to them and said, Suffer or allow the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day, you shall teach, you shall keep in thine heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And that's a way of saying that this is, this is what you're carrying with you, these things. If you're carrying, when you rise up, when you go to sleep, when you're walking, this is, you're carrying these things. And it is your challenge to instill in your children this, the same vigor for God and his word that you have. That you may leave a legacy to your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And for the parents, I would like you to listen to these vows and answer them in the affirmative and think about them before you answer. Do you promise before God to live your lives as examples to your children? Examples of what a true Christian life looks like. Do you commit before God in the company of these witnesses to raise your, child, your children in the kingdom of God in church? Amen. Do you promise to teach your child the sacred scripture concerning not only salvation but godliness? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you promise to pray for your child diligently concerning their salvation and witness for Jesus? Do you promise to show the importance of church by your commitment to the house of God? <laughs> Amen. Amen. We have all these children. Wonderful. Hi there. You want to pray? <laughs> she, she, she grabs her mother. <laughs> Who's the scary guy with the thing on his head? I'm going to pray. I'm going to anoint you with oil. According to the word, yes, we anoint you with oil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We anoint with oil according to the word of God. She's already done, right? Yes. This baby? Yes. Amen. Hello, beautiful. We know it with oil according to the word of God. <laughs> we know it with oil according to the word of God. Oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. Mercy and grace. Standing with these parents, with this family. We dedicate this child to your kingdom and your purposes, praying peace protection. Even now, O oh God, we pray that you would touch and minister to this baby. In Jesus' name, we now dedicate this child before Almighty God in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray blessing and grace and mercy and protection and provision praying your blessing, Lord God. We pray dedication. We now dedicate this baby to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We pray blessing in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. We now dedicate this child to you, for your glory and purposes. We pray your protection, grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. We thank you, O God. We thank you. We pray your grace, mercy, and protection in the name of Jesus. If we now dedicate this child to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the parents and pray your blessing. Pray your wisdom, wisdom, O God. Wisdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We pray wisdom and blessing in the parents in the name of Jesus, Lord. Wisdom and blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We pray wisdom and blessing in the name of Jesus. Wisdom. Wisdom, Lord God, to know how to guide and lead in various situations. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Protection and blessing in Jesus' name. We pray wisdom, O God, that they would know how to lead in various situations. We pray, Lord God, for protection and wisdom. Father, as we stand before you, Almighty God, We as a congregation stand here in awe of the glory of the risen Savior. And we dedicate along with these parents, these children, to you, O God. We pray your hedge of protection physically, spiritually, emotionally, in every way. That they be blessed, that the parents will be blessed, the children will be blessed. In the name of Jesus, we pray you would not allow the enemy to steal. But blessing would go forth before these children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. Glory to God. Let's have the band come back up. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. Praise God. Don't forget, next week is uh, Patriotic Sunday. You want to be here for that? Bless the Lord. Would you stand, please? Let's have a little worship here together right now before we end. We'll worship God together. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Do you sing that? Okay. Okay, good. Amen. Thank God. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's end with this song, Shepherd. Beautiful song. And then we'll uh, pray, have some food together. Y'all said, brother? Go ahead.
Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace that passes understanding. May the Lord, the King, Jesus King, lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace and blessing. May you be blessed spiritually, relationally, 
physically, financially, emotionally, in every way, to the glory of God working in your life in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray you bless the food in our time of fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Have some food and fellowship. And don't go until you do that. And bring someone to church next week. Amen.